In this video for the Beacon Hill dollhouse construction, I'm going to go over electrical lighting. I decided to use the circuit electrical wiring system and I purchased the large house wiring kit and an additional roll of tape wire. I estimated that one roll of tape may not be sufficient for the entire house. However, I was able to wire the entire house with the original roll that came with the kit. So I could have saved myself the $20 I spent on the extra roll. I went online to shop for light fixtures that were mostly purchased on Amazon and eBay. The chosen fixtures were basic to keep the cost down. In addition, a wire stripper and electrical tape are used. There are many videos available online to explain the wiring system, so I won't go into this in detail. With each new junction, I used the test probe to ensure that this would provide an electrical transmission. When the pins of the probe are inserted into each half of the tape, the end of the test probe lights up to indicate that electricity is being conducted. After selecting the wiring system, I started early in the construction process to plan the electrical wiring. I began planning after assembling the core walls and roof of the house. Since I knew that the exterior would be covered with siding, I decided to install the tape wire along the exterior and run wire to interior fixtures through the walls. This would provide me maximum flexibility to finish the interior without having to find ways to hide the wire. Around the same period, I drew the lines for the siding that would be installed much later. At this stage in the construction, the main body is in place, but the additions of the porch, trim, and windows have yet to be installed that would be in the way of the tape wire. I marked areas on the inside and the outside of the house where electric fixtures are to be installed. With that, tape wire needed to be in the proximity of the fixtures and the tape had to make a continuous connected pattern from beginning to end. I used masking tape to play around with the possible layouts of the tape wire and I wanted the junction box to be located on the underbody of the house where it would connect to the transformer. I decided to use the basement window to run the initial tape wire from the underbody to the exterior of the house. As I got to a portion of the construction that would interfere with the tape wire, I peeled off the masking tape and replaced this with the tape wire. This has a self-adhesive backing that can be attached to the body of the house. The brads are attached to the tape wire junctions for intersecting tape runs. I obtained some low voltage wire that would be compatible with the fixtures and connected the wire to the tape. For the designated areas to run electrical, a hole was made using a dremel and the wire was run through the hole. In many rooms, the wire extended from the origin location to another location in the room. The origin was often the more expedient location to pull the wire into the room. I used black electrical tape to better secure the connection to the tape wire. As a note, this tape does not have good adherence to the house body and some other tape may have been better. The junction box was secured on the underbody and a small notch was dremeled on the back foundation to run the wire leading to the transformer. I had a slight issue with the connection on the underside of the house and had to redirect the tape along the left wall. Since I already had the brads in place, I did not want to reconnect with a new run of tape, so instead I carefully pulled up the tape and recontacted the tape to the body of the house. This is not very aesthetic, but eventually it will be covered with siding. One of the trickier areas to pull wire was on the third floor bedroom. The mansard roof is on the exterior of the room, so I had to drill a hole under the roof overhang and pull the wire into the window opening and out into the interior wall. Similarly, a hole was drilled under the overhang to pull a wire for the fireplace.
On the exterior, a porch light is to be installed to the right of the front door. Wires were connected to the tape wire, then the fixture was connected once the siding was installed. The excess wire is pushed into the cavity of the siding and the back of the fixture. In addition, electrical outlets were installed under the porch overhang. This is to be used in the eventuality of connecting Christmas lights. When it came time to attach fixtures to the electrical wires, I experimented with soldering. I had slight success for some of the connections, but often I struggled and abandoned this technique. Generally, I took a simpler approach of twisting the wires and wrapping with electrical tape. For the living room, I also chose to include an outlet that is hidden from view on the side of the fireplace. This could be used for attaching a table lamp. For the ceiling fixture in the living room, additional wire was joined and this was run along the wall and ceiling corner toward the back of the house. This allowed me to run the wire to the fixture from the back to the center of the ceiling where the wire would be least visible from view. The wire will eventually be covered with crown molding. A similar process was followed for most of the rooms in the house. Having the wire run to the back of the house also made the connection to the fixture easier to handle. The lights were arranged and laid out in the rooms for which they would be installed. For the kitchen, I chose the Tiffany style fixture. The factory plug was removed and the wires were stripped and joined by twisting the exposed wires together. Electrical tape was wrapped around the joints. I concluded that the sticky backing of the fixture was not sufficient, so I fashioned additional reinforcement with double-sided tape and attached this to the ceiling. Even with the reinforcement, most of the light fixtures came loose and super glue was used to secure the fixture to the ceiling. The excess wire was bundled and attached to the back of the wall trim with poster tack. The second floor bathroom light fixture was attached in a similar fashion. I accidentally purchased several battery operated light fixtures instead of the intended electrically connected ones. For these, the metal plate was attached to the ceiling with super glue and the magnet in the fixture attaches the light. This can be pulled away from the ceiling to change the battery. This type was installed for the third floor bedroom, sitting room, and tower roof. The electrical wiring intended for the electrically connected fixtures was bundled and attached to the back wall trim with poster tack. This remains generally out of view from the back wall and can be used in the future. The battery fixtures were also installed in the second floor bedroom and landing. Battery fixtures were installed in the first floor living room and dining room areas. The fixtures used in the dining room did not come with a magnetized metal plate so I cut a piece from a refrigerator magnet and glued this to the ceiling. For the wall sconces installed on the third level landing, I had difficulty concealing the excess wire. I cut off the upper portion of the glue stick cap and drilled a hole in the center. The excess wire was bundled in the plastic cavity and the fixture was glued to the cap. The cap was then glued to the wall. This was not my preferred way to install the light, but the cap appears somewhat intentional with the fixture.
Thanks for watching.